Civil Designer Water Network Analysis. Here we go. Okay, let's start by attaching our drawing. Open. I found it. Changed my paper size to a zero. Okay, okay, okay. There's my drawing with the water pipe shown in the dashed line. And I go to the water mode, file, project settings, terrain, attach my DT7 file, water, find a water file or create a water file. These are all blank. I'm going to choose one. You could also type in yours here and then go with that. Um, okay. The next step is to extract the water network from the cat lines. File, import, convert drawing entities. These are on the water pipes layer. I don't have any of this other information. Okay. Zoom in. There we go. There's my network now in Civil Designer. The nodes are the circles and the links are the, the lines. Right, so I now need to assign a supply node. You could have more than one. I'm just going to choose this one over here. Click on it. Data node. And I'm going to set the preset pressure. It's my supply node to the residual pressure at whatever that node is. And I happen to know that it's 5.8 bars or 58 meters. Okay. It will ease of identification. Put some numbers on these nodes. Nodes. I'm going to change the color to yellow. I don't want a text box. I want this to be at the top right corner and I want to show the node ID. Okay. So here I have a number of nodes each numbered and this is where I would assign flow. So I'm going to go ahead and assign flow to a couple of random nodes just for illustration purposes. You can do it in a number of ways. You can either click on the node, so let's say for instance node 9, uh, data node, you see that node 9 is identified, and assign a preset demand here. I'm going to go with one node, uh, I'm going to go with 0.6 liters per second, which is quite a bit. Demand pattern 7. The demand pattern is talking about the way that flow varies through the day. If I click on the ellipsis, you'll see this is demand pattern 7. It has a peak flow, uh, a peak factor of 6. If, you're, if you don't want a peak factor of 6, you could maybe use one of the other patterns that exist. Um, alternatively, you could modify this by manually changing the text inside this block over here. Okay, but the default demand pattern at this stage is 7. You could change that at a later stage for all the nodes. Okay, so I'm going to put in flows randomly at a couple of nodes now by going to the data spreadsheet nodes. Uh, and here I can see all the information about the nodes. And um, let's have a quick look here in terms of demand. Can I maybe modify something here? I click here. Can I put a flow? I can. 0.034 liters per second. This is all liters per second. 0.6 liters per second is there. And maybe let's go with um, four liters per second. Now remember, four times six is going to be a big number, so we can expect some big flows in the system. So you could, for instance, put your fire flow here. Just divide your fire flow by the peak factor when you enter it in here, because you don't want to multiply your fire flow by the peak factor as well. Close. So I have a supply node, and I've got some dwarfs in my system. Now it's time to do an analysis. Analysis, single step analysis, which is the most simple one, on the maximum demand. So I'm multiplying my average demand by my peak factor. I'm not applying any of this other stuff at the moment. Let's go with start. Please ignore the dogs barking in the background. We don't know what's going on. Messages, no errors found, close. So now if I want to see the results of the analysis, and this is going to be interpretive, with what you do with these results, results, nodes, and you'll see the results from the nodes analysis. Now, if you subtract the hydraulic grade line, the head from the elevation, you should get the residual pressure. I, I'm not 100% sure, but just check that out as part of your calculation. For the pipes, we have the same story here. You have velocity in the pipes as well as head loss and gradient. Good, this is the slope of the pipe, by the way. Close. And uh, that really, if you've printed that out, saved it to Microsoft Excel, done all the calculations and you find that your residual pressures are within range, you have successfully achieved the objectives of your design. 
Um, if not, you need to go back and either change pipe diameters, demands, and all the variables that you might think of uh, that will get your system to work effectively. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you have any questions, please come and see me or send me an email.